Welcome to another edition of Motivating Monday. My name is Robin, and I hope that this sharing will encourage you for the rest of this week. So this morning, I would like to talk about being strong in grace. And I will be drawing from the first seven verses of 2 Timothy chapter 2. So along the journey of being a Christian, it is inevitable that we will face challenges to our faith and hardships in life that may shake our grounding. We can take heart from this passage where the Apostle Paul was writing to Timothy, who had served with him in missionary journeys across various places, to encourage him and also to provide fortitude in the face of trials uh, that he would face. The first two verses of the passage, they read, you, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So Paul was encouraging Timothy to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. This was an important point, as nothing can give us more confidence and strength than the unmerited favour of God, knowing that He will take care of those who have elected to become recipients of His grace through salvation in Christ. So it, it is also helpful to note that Paul was able to draw from his personal experiences of hardships in providing this uh, encouragement to Timothy. The next two verses of the passage Use the context of warfare to describe the Christian journey. So these, these verses really impart the seriousness and the magnitude of being a Christian. As Christians, we are engaged in spiritual warfare against the forces of darkness. And we have been enlisted as soldiers for Christ to strive for His cause. And so the verses read, You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. So as soldiers for Christ, we must remember our mission to seek and to save the lost, to make disciples of all the nations. It is easy to become sidetracked if we focus on the affairs of this life. So a good soldier is known for obeying commands and would not give up easily when encountering some of these hardships. So now we come to the last few verses of this passage, where they use another context of athletics and also farming to encourage and to exhort. So the last few verses... Uh, namely verse 5 and verse 6, they read, And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hard-working farmer must be first to partake of the crops. So in athletics competitions, and also across different sports, there are standard rules to follow to ensure things like fair competition among athletes. Athletes cannot make up their own rules along the way and they may be disqualified if they breach the, the rules that have been set. So it's a timely reminder for Christians to live according to the gospel, and not to think that we can make up our own rules for Christian life. Because when Christ returns, it, will, it can be an encouragement to know that we will be judged fairly according to the word. There will not be different standards for different people. About the context of farming, uh, a lot of hard work and labor is involved in order to reap the harvest, as verse 6 suggests. The farmer or the one sowing the seed must be the first to partake of the crops, meaning we must first feed ourselves the word of God before we can feed it to others. And the use of these illustrations by Paul to encourage Timothy can uh, also encourage us as Christians. We know that we can be strong 
in God's grace, and that despite the trials and the tribulations that may befall us, with this understanding, we can take heart to know that fellow Christians also face their own battles, and we can help each other along the way, just like how Paul encouraged Timothy in this passage. So the passage ends with verse 7, and it reads, Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. So I, I hope that this passage has served as an encouragement to you, and I'd like to wish you a great week ahead, and thank you very much for listening. Holy Lord, in thee.